Recently, I built an abandoned miniature lab inside of a book, and today I'll show you how to use simple materials and tools to create a crumbling plaster ceiling. To make the ceiling, I'm using map board, which is the very thick, multi-layered paper you see inside of picture frames. I got a big sheet of this at Michael's for $7. I'm using the ceiling in an abandoned space and I want it to look like the ceiling is crumbling and falling apart so I traced an irregular shape onto the mat board. I'm cutting out the section entirely so it'll look like this entire piece of ceiling has fallen down. Mat board is a really versatile and useful material but if you don't have any you could also try gluing together a few layers of cereal box or even use a piece of cardboard. The scissors left a clean cut, so I'm making the edges more ragged so they match the abandoned aesthetic. To make the ceiling look like lath and plaster, I'll be gluing some coffee stir sticks to the underside. Coffee stir sticks are pretty small, but they're actually a bit too thick and out of scale, so I'm using my X-Acto knife to shave them so they're thinner. Here's the original coffee stir stick compared to the thinner version. Before I can add my lath, I need to paint the ceiling, so I'm starting with this tan color as a base. This layer of paint is the first of many layers, and I'm applying it in a haphazard way because it doesn't matter if any of the layers are perfect. Without cleaning my brush, I dipped it into some yellow ochre to emphasize the opening that I created. I used a combination of brown, yellow ochre, and white to add a dingy looking darker layer of paint to the ceiling. To keep it looking more natural, I'm not cleaning my brush between each color and I'm also layering the paint over other layers of wet paint so they blend together. To lighten it up, I added a small amount of white paint over the top of everything. To sell this ceiling as a water damage ceiling, I'm using some watered down black paint on a toothbrush to add some speckles to the surface. These little black specks of paint represent mold and mildew. I added some mold to the corner since I've been neglecting the edges. To cover up the different layers of paper and add some more depth, I'm using some black paint inside of the layers. I traced around the hole I made in the ceiling and filled it in with black paint, making sure to overlap the area I traced so no original white ceiling is exposed. This step is optional, but I really love the effect it makes. I'm using my paintbrush to apply some liquid latex around the opening. If you saw my peeling paint video, you'll be familiar with this product. I got my liquid latex on Amazon for $10 for a pretty large bottle. This liquid latex will mask off any of the areas I'm painting it on so I can layer paint over top of it once it dries. I can remove the latex completely to expose the paint underneath or I can remove it partially to make it look like peeling and flaking paint. I show several different techniques for using this product in my peeling paint tutorial video so I'll link that video in the description below. The latex takes about 15 minutes to dry but to speed it along I'm using my heat gun. When my latex dries, it goes from white to clear. Now that it's dry, I'm layering a coat of lighter paint over top of it. For any of the areas I've added liquid latex, I can peel those off and see the original paint job underneath. If you're into making abandoned miniatures, I would suggest buying liquid latex, but you could also try to use masking fluid for watercolor paint or even rubber cement as a substitute.
You can remove the latex by pulling on it with your fingers, rolling your fingers across the surface, or using tweezers. You can still achieve a really cool looking ceiling even without this product, but I really love the variation the liquid latex creates. To make life a bit easier, I glued my pieces of wood in place before staining them. I'm using watered down brown paint as my stain. When I glued the pieces of wood down, I made sure to leave a realistic gap between any missing boards where a piece of lath could have fit there before while the building was being made. To make the little pieces of wood look old and dry, I'm using some off-white paint to dry brush over the top. This layer of paint emphasizes the textures on the wood and makes it look like it still has some dry plaster powder stuck to them. The simple detail that really takes this project to the next level is this Spanish moss. I got a big bag of this from my local dollar store for $1. It not only hides the painted black hole, but it adds some cool texture and makes it look like there are some old plants that grew and died in the ceiling. Since this is supposed to be an old plaster ceiling, I'm mixing up a bit of plaster of Paris to add to the wooden pieces. This brand calls for a mixture of two parts of the powder with one part of cold water, but I used one part of powder and one part water because I want it to be more liquid. When mixing, remove any cat hairs you find and make sure you mix until there's no longer any white powder. I'm using my little plastic tool to add some plaster to the very edges of the lath. I probably should have done this step before I added the Spanish moss. The plaster dried in just a few minutes and looked a bit too smooth and perfect, so I'm using my tool to break it up. The plaster looked really stark white, so I'm using some watered down brown paint to reduce the contrast. I think this would have looked even better if I had added trim around the ceiling to cover the gap where the mat board meets the wall. Let me know if you have any ideas or you can think of anything I missed. Make sure you check out the rest of the videos in this series and don't forget to marvel at how much stuff you can fit in a 3 inch deep book. I'm Shira with Queen City Minis and as always, thank you for watching.